Hello everyone. I hope you're enjoying this garden history unit. I want to talk to you today about the mid-1700s English garden and the different influences that era has on landscapes today and how you can apply some of the features in a modern day landscape. And my name is Katrina Landsman. In the early 1700s, English gardens were influenced by French garden design. Then, because of political conflicts between England and France, many gardens were destroyed and a new naturalistic approach was developed. The new English gardens involved winding paths and open lawns. The English created gardens that utilized the existing topography and even included grazing cattle and sheep. English design really began to capitalize on numerous views within the landscape. Remember though, everything was supposed to look natural with large rolling lawns, large lakes, and clumps of trees. But don't be fooled, the lakes and clumps of trees were carefully planned. The English also included two main structures in their designs, ha-has and follies. A ha-ha is a fence to keep cattle or sheep in, but a ditch is dug where the fence gets built so that the fence does not obscure the view of the large lawn. A folly is a constructed building that is primarily for decoration or an accent in the landscape. A folly would be carefully placed along with the trees to make sure there was a new view around each wind of the path. The image on the bottom in the middle is from the movie Pride and Prejudice, if you are familiar with the scene including the folly. Examples of these English style gardens are Central Park in New York City, New York, and Iowa State University's campus in Ames, Iowa. You will find that most universities' campuses have a mid-1700s English style feel. Fun fact, Iowa State University's campus and Central Park were both designed by Frederick Law Olmsted. If you want to create a design with mid-1700s English style influence, you could incorporate a large lawn, informal planting designs, the use of larger trees, follies, winding paths, and maybe you even let a sheep roam around to help keep your lawn trimmed. Just remember to keep the scale of the design in mind. Thanks for watching. This has been part of the online garden design course through the Department of Horticulture at Iowa State University.